Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the Zelda Dungeon.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Our first question comes from Skull Kid. In future Zelda games, would you want the overworld of Hyrule Field to be like the overworld in Xenoblade, Chron Xenoblade Chronicles? Extremely large and open with plenty to explore? Yes. Uh, Ricky asks, what is the Master Sword made of? Juicy J asks, which boss in Zelda would you say is the best, and which one would you say is the worst? Best, like, you know, for me, it would actually be the Gearheim fights in Skyward Sword. Love the battles in Skyward Sword in general, but uh, Gearheim is my favorite, so he's my favorite of the series. Worst, on the other hand, would be Armogoma. Yeah, that's just a really obnoxious fight. But be sure to tell me uh, your guys in the comments, though. Uh, Hero of Time 253 asks, What do you think is the most annoying thing in the Zelda series? Well, you know, there's a lot of little annoyances, uh, but uh, in particular, recently, I'm sure you, you, some of you know that I published an article uh, about the most, the, my top 16 most annoying characters in Zelda, and one of the ones I put is all of the shopkeepers in Skyward Sword, because it's just the annoying, the annoying trying to get through the dialogue, trying to go through all the menus uh, for you know, just buying stuff, and the worst is probably the potions, uh, the potion shop in Skyward Sword, because you have to spend a long time just trying to buy some potions. I think I spent 10 minutes restocking once. It just eats on the time, and it's unnecessary. It's really obnoxious, so that, that'd probably be one for me. Bottom of the well in Majora's Mask, specifically, might qualify too, though. Be sure to tell me yours, though. JC Lee asks, in your opinion, which version of Link's traditional green garb is the most visually appealing? I'd probably say Twilight Princess. He just looks really cool. I love his bracers, you know. Uh, of course, we're talking about Link's fashion, so I'm sure there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of you guys, or g girls, maybe, um, <laughs> might have some input on that, so tell me your thoughts as well. Um, Cameron asks, what are the origins of Link's green outfit? My first game was Ocarina of Time, and I thought his outfit came from his being raised as a Kokiri, who have the similar clothes. But he wears the same clothes in all the games that precede Ocarina of Time on the timeline. Is there any canonical explanation for, the, for his clothes? Not really. Uh, you could think that Ocarina of Time is kind of like the uh, the retconned uh, example of the explanation, because a lot of the other games follow Skyward Sword's example, or at least could, because in Skyward Sword, it's the knight outfit in... Uh, in uh, uh, the Wind Waker, it's based on the Ocarina, on the Hero of Time's outfit, and in Spirit Tracks, it's based on, well, it's the, it's the guard uniform, so it could be based on the same outfit, because Link helped found new Hyrule. Uh, and it's similar in Twilight Princess, it's the hero's clothes. But, uh, I, I like to, th in my opinion, they just don't have a set explanation for it, and they have their own explanations for the clothing in each game. And I like it best that way. Uh, in, in Ocarina of Time, it really doesn't fit to say that the, uh, the clothes come from anywhere else other than being a Kokiri garb. And even in the Minish Cap, they try to explain where his cap comes from, which is from Ezlo giving him the cap. That's what the creators have said, anyway. Uh, whereas in Skyward Sword, before the Minish Cap on the timeline, he has the cap, so that's obviously not true. I, I just think they uh, come up with a new explanation every time just to make it unique. Uh, Crucible77 asks, I have a question on the pronunciation of Ocarina. Some people say Ocarina, and some say Aukarina. Is there a right way? Yes, there is. It's a real instrument, a real word, so there's definitely a correct pronunciation, and it is Ocarina. It is definitely not something where there's a bunch of different uh, possible uh, pronunciations, and we just don't know. It's a real word, and it's Ocarina. So, yeah. Uh, Oscus asks, If you go to the quest item screen in Ocarina of Time and look at the medallions, the Shadow Temple's medallion is placed after the Spirit Temple's medallion. This would mean the Shadow Temple is the last dungeon, yet many people seem to do the Spirit Temple last. Why is this? Well, the reason why is because the game pretty much wants you to. The game's designed so that as soon as you beat the Water Temple, uh, the uh, the scene with uh, the well breaking open, whatever, with Sheik, uh, is uh, triggered. It, it will only happen after you beat the Water Temple. And uh, then you get the Lens of Truth. And the Lens of Truth is needed uh, to enter the Shadow Temple, but also to enter the Spirit Temple. But it's tied to the Shadow Temple story. It has the same themes. And, uh, you know, it's basically prompting you to go to the Shadow Temple first. Uh, I like to think that the order on the menu is probably just they intended the opposite order. They intended the scary area to go last, but ultimately decided that the Ganon's origin area should go last. And I think it was a good call, but it's interesting because I do think that that definitely mean, uh, is a sign of their original intention. Uh... The Game Freak 893 asks, Wouldn't you say that Majora's Mask is the creepiest, if not weirdest, Zelda game? You get masks of the people who died, there's the whole moon situation, and the backstory of Ben. What do you think about this? Well, Ben is not part of the story. That's a fan thing completely made up. It's not part of the game. 
Uh, as for the other stuff, I guess it is one of the creepier games. I've maintained and still maintain that it's not really dark, but I guess it can be not that dark and still be creepy. The death themes in the game, I've always felt actually were more on, like, a spiritual side. It wasn't like, oh god, there's people dying, it's worshipping death, it's like all about death, death, death. It is about death, but I always felt it was more about, like, the spiritual take on it. The people who died are okay. There's, that's not like, I don't think there's anything creepy about that. I think it's an interesting take on the situation. Uh, that's my take on Majora's Mask. It's definitely the weirder game, though. Uh, with potentially Link's Awakening as its only competition, it's one of the strangest games of the series. I agree with you there. Um, David Dirt asks, I never made use of the curiosity shop in Majora's Mask. Did you? <laughs> How and would you, how and would you like to see the Curiosity Shop back in future games? Not really. I think that uh, you know the idea of a uh, black market area would be interesting to see in a Zelda game. But as for the Curiosity Shop itself, no, not really. I don't think it's that important. And no, I've never made extensive use of the Curiosity Shop. The only real reason to use it is for the story and for the All Night Mask, which is ironic given the name of this mailbag. But being honest, it's actually that's one of the reasons I had to answer this question. Um, Link5967 asks, Do you think that Majora's Mask could have a sequel? Because at the end, the Link rides off with rides off on Epona. Also, it would make sense to have a sequel, right? Because Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask were the two best games in the series. What do you think? I think that that story's done, essentially. I mean, yeah, it's kind of open-ended, he rides off, but that's how a lot of stories end, and I think it's best that way. I think that the Hero of Time tale was is done, more or less. I think that the only reason people like talk about continuing it is just because it was very popular. But I don't think it really needs to continue, and it would have no real benefit to the story for it to continue. So I think it should just be left alone. Maybe similar stories could be explored, but I don't think the same one needs to be touched. Uh, Link's Journey asks, Did you feel Oracle of Seasons was ripping off Legend of Zelda on the NES when it came to dungeons and bosses? Nah, I wouldn't call it that. I mean, yeah, it was obviously copying them, uh, but I, I, I consider that just a homage. I mean, maybe the game's a little less original, but uh, it, that, I don't. I wouldn't call that a ripoff. Ripoffs uh, imply a negative, have a negative connotation. It's like you're stealing from something. It's their own game, and uh, it's it's more like an interesting homage. It makes it less uh, new, but it's still fun. I think it was cool to see a game uh, base itself off the original Legend of Zelda a lot. I thought that was interesting. Uh, Kasim asks, in the Wind Waker's second quest, Link can't see the hero's new clothes, but Ganon can. Does that make Ganon honest? Because Link's grandma says only honest people can see it. Actually, I don't remember Ganon saying that, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's enough said. Um, Zelda Nerds 1703 asks, In Twilight Princess, the desert area was called Gerudo Desert, but there aren't any Gerudos there. Why was this? No real reason other that I can think of, other than that they just decided they weren't going to have the Gerudos in the game. It's just that not every race is going to appear in every game. I'm kind of glad about it because I think that it was already, uh, Twilight Princess was already very similar to Ocarina of Time, so it didn't need them. Uh, some people like to theorize that the Death Sword had something to do with their extinction, but this complete fan theory speculation has nothing to do with anything in the game. But it's, it's an interesting idea if you like it. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. They just weren't put in the game. They just named it after them. Uh, Spearson270 uh, asks, In the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess, on the doors, you see the same symbol on the Deku Shield in Ocarina of Time. It's the same case with the doors in the Forbidden Woods in the Wind Waker. What do you think this means? Well, that's a Kokiri symbol. And in, in the Wind Waker, it makes a lot of sense because, well, the Koroks are the Kokiri, or new form of them, and it's the Deku Tree, etc., etc., etc. In Twilight Princess, it's the same thing with kind of like the Gerudo Desert. It's just they, they took the, the, the uh, themes and reused them, but uh, the race itself didn't appear. They just decided not to use it. So, it's the same thing there. Uh, Sithril asks, Hyrule Historia revealed that the hero shade from Twilight Princess is in fact the hero of time from Ocarina of Time. However, since Twilight Princess takes place in the child timeline, Link never became the hero of time, nor did he get the Master Sword. How can this be explained? Well, there could be a lot of stories left untold, but ultimately, I think Nintendo does tend to kind of forget about how the timeline split works, and they seem to act like it's a linear timeline. But I think the best explanation here, aside from the Master Sword thing, I have, I have no answer to that, um, is that uh, just because uh, Nintendo calls him a hero of time doesn't mean he was known as that in the game world, you know? Uh, that's probably, it's like, it's just how the fans identify the Link from Ocarina of Time, you know? That, that kind of thing. Uh, William asks, if you recall in one of the Skyward Sword trailers at about 30 seconds, there was a figure that looked like Skull Kid. Since the game has been long released, do you know what it is? Do you remember seeing anything or any place in the game like it? Uh, this was actually debunked, debunked uh, pretty early. 
uh, before the game even came out, that was just a Skulltula. They look like the Skull Kid a bit when they're in a silhouette, but it's just Skulltula. <laughs> Alright, last question. Video Game Addict 12 asks, What do you think the greatest aspect of Zelda is? The game always had a magical feel to me, and there are, there are so many reasons why it could make someone want to play it, but what do you think contributes the most? Honestly, with Zelda, I think it tends to be, like, all the elements together, but I think if I was to say one thing, it's kind of like the series has its own style, its own heart. That's one of the reasons I actually didn't like Twilight Princess as much, as I felt it deviated from that a lot, uh, but, uh, with how, like, dull or dark it seemed at times. But I think that's the series, it's it's uh, it's a whimsical fantasy story, it's very gameplay driven, it's always a lot of fun, they they put emphasis on how, how fun it is to go through the game, and I think it's those elements together that make it uh, kind of what it is and what makes it as special, kind of like the spark that you're talking about. Alright guys, that's it for this time, be sure to send your questions to the contact page in the description, and I'll see you guys later!